Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As we have said so many times before, I trust everyone is, is, is venerating the icon. As we have said many times before, there is no such thing as coincidence. That is an accidental, somehow accidental uh, confluence of anything in the church but rather that everything, everything that occurs, that is foreseen in the typicon of the church, all of these things, for there are 24 different possibilities of confluence of the feast of the, the Annunciation in the typicon of the Orthodox Church. And this is only one of those 24 possibilities. And at first glance, it may appear that they are not related, that somehow they are two separate feasts, that they are somehow simply a coincidence of feasts that have to do with the movable and immovable calendar of the church. And yet, this is not so. For the person of our Savior, as Savior and Redeemer of the whole world and of his mother are indivisibly, indivisibly united, indivisibly together, indivisibly related one to the other. At the very beginning, even from the time that she was born in her in a miraculous manner she was born to her aged parents to when she went into the temple and where into the temple into the holy of holies where there were the great the great yearly once a year sacrifice that was offered by the priest for the sins of the people from there she began to have an idea an understanding of her part in the salvation of the human race. How? When she heard the angelic annunciation of the archangel Gabriel, with whom she was very familiar, for it was he who would bring her food. He would bring her nourishment, heavenly nourishment, for the time that she was there in the Holy of Holies, being prepared for her role in the salvation of mankind. But this Annunciation, this was something strange to her. This was something new to her. For he had never spoken before of the role that our Savior would have in the salvation of mankind of the human race. But rather, she understood from the fact that he said that he will be the Savior he will be the Savior, Christ the Lord, and his name will be Savior. For, for Jesus in the Hebrew tongue is the Savior. And she understood, being a student of the Holy Scripture, that just as the Old Testament, any testament, must be sealed by blood, and the Old Testament was sealed by the blood of circumcision, so the New Testament, the new covenant that God had with man for his salvation in Christ Jesus would also be sealed with blood. Whose blood? The very blood of the God-man, the blood of Christ Jesus our Lord, which he shed for our sakes during his holy passion. When our Savior was 40 days old, and was taken to the temple. And there in the temple was greeted joyfully by Saint Simeon the God Receiver. Simeon the God Receiver, who had been one of the translators of the 70, of the Septuagint translation into Greek of the Old Testament from Hebrew. When he had read that, behold, in the book of Isaiah, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. He was skeptical. 
He says, how can such a thing be? And his skepticism, because our Lord wanted him to live and not have this skeptical thought, not only allowed him to live to a great old age, maybe 200 years. In any case, he goes here from the translation of the Septuagint into Greek, all the way until the 40 days when our Savior was brought into the temple. And he said with such joy, now let us thy servant depart in peace. For mine eyes have seen the salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light for the generation of the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. After he had finished this doxology and this prayer to release him from the promise and the goodness of God who had allowed him to live to see the Savior. Then he turned to the Holy Mother of God and said to the Theotokos, and you, a, pierce, a, a sword shall pierce your heart, giving her a little bit of understanding that she would be a co-sufferer with our Savior Christ in the matter of our salvation, that she would know sadness, and she would know pain, and she would know the the worst of pains that a mother can have of seeing her child treated as our Lord was. And indeed, besides our Savior himself, who felt more keenly the betrayal, the trial, the beatings, every single scrap of which she felt also, the spittings, the insults, the thorns of that crown that was given to our Savior was smashed onto his head with such vehemence and evilness by the soldiers. Who else was it who bore the cross? Who else was it who bore the cross along with her son as she followed him with the faithful women and the Holy Apostle St. John to the place of his martyric death. Who else was it who stood by the cross and breathed those terrible breaths that our Savior tried to breathe as he was hanging upon the cross? For it is to asphyxiation that the victims of the whole of a crucifixion died. Who else was it who bore the bringing down of her son and his burial? And who rejoiced more at his holy resurrection after three days in the tomb? So you see that all of these great milestones of our salvation that are called the Dominical the Feast of the Master and the Feast of the Theotokos, how they are indivisibly united in the matter of our salvation. It is for this reason that we have such respect, we have such exalted abasement before her, and we ask of her, her intercessions to her son, who is the only intercessor between God and man, but just as we are sometimes afraid or a little bit ashamed or just a little nervous to go to a high-ranking person in the government, but we ask someone to intercede for us to this person. So it is with us who, knowing that the Theotokos is of the same blood, of the same birth, of the same matter of which we are made. So it is that we approach her many times, being sinful people, people who it is not right for us to touch him any more than the woman who has had the issue of blood to touch him. So we ask of her her intercessions. We ask of her 
her prayers so that she might take our request to her son so that he might grant that which is good for our souls and for that our salvation. So we see that wonderful confluence of these two feasts and how every seven years or so we see on the Lord's Day sometimes in some other place in the great fast sometimes separate from it but we see <coughs> the, the, the creation of our Savior of our Teotokos we see the, 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 the miracle of the Annunciation of the Theotokos. And we should keep in mind, as beneficiaries of this close relationship of Christ our Jesus and our Lord, our Savior and our Redeemer, that who hears the words and the prayers of his mother and bows down the heavens for great is the influence of the mother we say in one of the hymns, great is the intercession of the mother for the calming of the anger of the Lord. So our Theotokos, we owe great worship. Our Savior, we owe great adoration together with his Father, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.